What is isotropy? Why is it important for polymeric products? And how is it measured? So isotropy simply means that a part uh, performs the same in all directions. And this can be really important because it helps provide predictability. A uh, part in a material will perform the same regardless of that exact geometry or how the part is loaded. In reality though, uh, polymeric parts are rarely perfectly isotropic for a variety of reasons that we'll touch on. Anisotropy in molded parts can come from differences in flow or temperature during the molding process. Particularly in fiber reinforced materials, uh, these fibers can align along the flow direction, uh, which means that you can get very different properties uh, when you test along that alignment versus against it. Weld lines where the polymer melt flow joins can be areas that you get poor entanglement of polymers during the molding process. Uh, so these weld lines can be close to full strength or they can be as little as 20% of the strength of the bulk material, uh, depending on the system, the geometry, the pack pressure of, of the particular part. Uh, temperature as well, differences in temperature can lead to differences in crystallization uh, in a semi-crystalline polymer. Uh, so this is a large you know, cause of warpage in molded parts, uh, but can also lead to differences in the material properties. Additive processes like FDM and SLS that rely on the fusing or sintering of bulk polymers uh, can also give rise to parts that have non-uniformity or anisotropy. And a major reason for this is as you're looking to uh, melt and fuse or sinter these polymeric particles together, you can end up with poor entanglement at these interfaces. Uh, and so this can effectively act like lots of little weld lines that you've built into the part and can also give rise to porosity as well. Carbon's DLS process is similar to traditional photopolymerization processes, but with a few twists to improve isotropy even more. Oxygen gives less defined layers during the UV curing process, which can lead to better entanglement between layers during the print. Even more importantly, the printed part incorporates latent curatives that are used to grow polymers within the part in a secondary heating step. This step doesn't have flow or layers and will further improve isotropy in the final part. And finally, how is isotropy measured? Uh, often this is just by property of interest. Parts can be anisotropic in their mechanical, thermal, electrical, or optical response. For mechanical properties, tensile modulus, strength, and elongation are commonly cited, but properties like impact, fatigue, and environmental stability are typically more sensitive to pore entanglement. For example, RP-130 is a tough, rigid material that is virtually isotropic when tested to ASTM tensile standards, but does show orientation differences and impact values, included here to help designers and engineers make the right choices. You can be sure if the part shows anisotropy and tensile properties that these are only magnified in more stringent testing. For more answers from additive experts, visit Carbon on YouTube or Carbon3D.com.